So I'd be remiss if I did not mention the elephant in the room here. Our lovely map that we've added since yesterday shows oh, every nice. unsolved skimming case in DFW and of course is the result of all of these, all of these open record requests that you intimately know everything about. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, filed them with a lot of police agencies in December and then it took all of January and some of February to go through and kind of figure out what what applied to us and what didn't. We only looked at skimmers in gas pumps. We didn't look at ATMs or anything else. We just looked at when you fill up, is there or was a skimmer found inside those gas pumps? And this is completely different too from the cases that have been filed with the state. This is the part of the story that blows my mind because if you go to the Department of Ag, the cases filed with them, it's what, fewer than 12? And then look at this from we, what we found. You know, there's a lot of real people in there. That's how we found um, Frank Perry. Frank, yeah, our victim. I mean, I called a lot of victims and talked to him and he just really stood out as somebody who- He, he was, was a character so made for angry. TV. He's so angry and rightfully so, I get it. Yeah. And, to uh, the backstory that we couldn't, of course, include in our story last night was that he had some trouble walking, so he had to get out of the car. His pump wasn't working, so then he gets even more mad. He has to walk across the gas station to the clerk, and his leg is hurting. He's in pain, but he wants to pay for his gas. The clerk offhandedly tells him, oh, use that pump over there, and that's the one that happens to be skimmed. So that's why Frank was so mad. And then lo and behold, a few days later, three extraneous charges on his statement. Yep. Wasn't happy about it. Yeah, and he said, I think it happened three times. Like he, he had to keep getting new cards. And so he was he was super aggravated and I, I totally get it. I mean, you don't, that's the last thing you think about when you go and fill up. It, at least it was for me before this started now. We have completely changed our habits to reporting this story because now knowing what we know, we go to certain gas stations. If we can, we walk in and we pay with cash. We go to certain pumps. I think the tip that the detective gave us last night was that use the inside pumps. Yep. Don't go to the outer pumps that are far away from the clerk because that's where the skimmers think they're hidden. They're hidden from surveillance cameras or from right. the watchful clerk. But uh, those are the ones that are easiest to get I to. Know. I texted you that one day and I was <laughs> like, I'm so paranoid to fill up right now. But I mean, I always go to the outermost ones because, you know, it's you're right there. You're in and, and you're out. No but more. you know what? That's where <laughs> they're hitting. Uh, a couple of people has not just a couple, a lot of people have weighed in on this story since right. it aired a few hours ago. People have questions about this because it literally affects anybody with a car or anybody who uses a card at a gas station. Yeah, yeah. So I thought there were some really good questions. Um, first off, the actual skimmer. People wanted to know, what is this thing? Right. What we found, it's not actually outlawed anywhere. Like this is no. not an illegal device because it's a hodgepodge of yeah. normal things. Well, it's just crazy that it's not illegal to have a skimmer. You can, there are legal uses for them. Uh, if you own a business and you wanna give out gift cards, you can skim blank cards and give people those. Uh, it's when you're using it to obviously steal, steal credit card information for fraud. is yes. when, when you get into that. But yeah, it just looks like a, I mean, as far as the ones that are found in the pumps, the, the legal ones that you can buy on Amazon, they look like something where you would swipe, like a, a black piece of plastic. But the ones inside the pumps are, they look like computer pieces, like insides of computers. It's everyday household items. I know that there's a big wire and that's what reads the magnetic mm -hmm. strip and transfers the numbers. But there's also other items like old cell phone batteries. So you have to have some sort of know-how of how to build this device, but you don't have to be a genius either. You just have to kind of know how to put them together. Right, right, yeah. I think that that was really interesting. And then a lot of people were asking about the Bluetooth because we kind of touched on that, that, you know, they, so many of them now, like no one's coming back for skimmers. Once they install them, they're not, they're they're not out. coming back for them. They're, they're cheap. Uh, and, and why risk it? Why return to the scene of the crime? Well, yeah, you, you don't can have just to. pull up next to, you know, next door to the gas station and just pull the information off Bluetooth. So that's what a lot of the police officers told us is mm -hmm. look for Bluetooth signals. We had a question about, can you tell us more about that? Because, yeah, you know, we didn't have so much time in the piece to kind of explain and break it down. But I want to, so take out your phones, everybody, if you wanted to know. And what you would do, you know, if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, I'm sorry, uh, but go to your settings button and look for Bluetooth. And here, I mean, Is there anything else? we're going to encounter some, I'm sure, technical difficulty here. But basically, that's where you want to go. Check the Bluetooth signal right when you're outside of the pump. And if you see something strange popping up, that might indicate, keyword might, 
that there is a Bluetooth skimming device inside the pump. And I just talked to Detective Trapach this morning about how do you know if it's a skimmer? He said that a lot of the user, I guess the, the title numbers, would start with this. HPO5 and HPO6 have been commonly linked to skimmer devices. I don't know why, he doesn't know why either, but for some reason that indicates that maybe it's being used by a skimmer. Right. And then of course, it's followed by a bunch of random characters, letters and numbers. So you may wanna be aware of that. Of course, that's not foolproof. The guy next to you in his car could have some sort of Bluetooth yeah. speaker, but it's just another thing to be aware of. For sure, and I mean, it doesn't hurt if you do see that and you feel uneasy, I mean, just go inside and pay. I know it can be a pain, but it just, it's just easier. Prevents fraud, yeah. you know, so to, that's easier. To avoid this at least, yeah. Speaking of avoiding, a lot of people have brought up this question that we did not even touch on in the story, and I kind of wish we did. Stuff like Apple Pay, alternative methods of payment. Somebody mentioned the Exxon Speed Pass, which I believe is some sort of fob yeah. that you, you know, touch to the gas pump. And detectives say, when I talked to them this morning, they said, you know, nothing is foolproof. If crooks want to get your information, they will find a way to hack you. However, this is way more safe. You know, if you're looking for a safer method, if you're looking for a harder way, you know, to, you know, a way to keep these guys off your right. back, this might be an alternative solution. It's a little bit safer. Yeah, well, I mean, especially if it's a skimmer. If the skimmer is inside the pump, it's wanting to get your card information. So if you're not using a card to pay, then you're not going to get skimmed. I mean, it, at least as far as I know. The thing that the skimmers are reading is the magnetic strip, strip. on the card. So if you're not inserting your card, voila, you good. should be a little bit safer. Right. But we're never going to tell anybody, oh, you're 100% safe, because then right. we're not just doing our job. You know, right, right. Well, and we did reckless. have um, a lot of people who commented on the Facebook post, um, and somebody emailed us and said, you know, I just, I just wiggle the card reader, and and if it's, you know, stays no. on, then you're fine. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, those are like the old school ones. That those are on <laughs> ATMs. Back in the day. Yeah, we've yeah, moved beyond those, that. Th that's not. You're you're wiggling the card reader on the pump is not going to help tell you if there is a skimmer on the inside. We're talking about the inside. They've opened it up. They've plugged it in, and there's no way, really, for you to know for sure. Late looking at a you know the pump with a naked eye, unless you know the security tape possibly, and then the Bluetooth possibly. And on the red tape, because that is the surest sign to know if somebody has broken into the chamber. Usually that means you're safe. But I think we've been told, the Secret Service told us a few weeks ago, the crooks have even thought beyond that, and they're starting to make their own counterfeit red tape. Yeah. So even then, even if you see this pristine strip of red tape, you can't be sure. Well, and there is blue, too, blue tape, I Blue tape say. as yeah, well. We've seen blue tape. And honestly, you can buy, I mean, just like we showed, you can buy the key, the universal key online. You can buy Anybody can the security find that. tape online. I know we so, got flack for that in the email, too. You know, I people mean, were like, oh, you know, you're, you're tipping off the crooks. People, yeah. We're not. It's called firing up the Google machine. And any, <laughs> if anyone wants to find a way to do it, it's on there. So right. I think we're just informing people as to this is how easy it is to penetrate yeah. these gas pumps. Uh, we had somebody ask us about, do the credit card companies actually report this to local police so they can investigate? Um, and what we found is that a lot of times the banks and the credit card companies, they report it to Secret Service. And then that's how the Secret Service agents know where to go. Like the companies will say, we've gotten a lot of fraud reports, you know, centered around this gas station or these pumps. And that's how they'll go check. But uh, for by and large, the people who are calling local police are mostly the people who have been scammed Victims. who say, yeah, hey, somebody's using my card, I have it with me, I don't know how it's happening, That's that type of thing. Yeah. Arlington police said by and large they're not receiving many reports from the credit card companies, it's mostly from victims, but it would make sense that they would be more in tune with the Secret right. Service. And a lot of people asked about why aren't gas stations doing more, and really like what we were told by several law enforcement is that gas stations don't have a dog in this fight. They, their information isn't getting skimmed. They're still selling gas. They're still, you know, getting business. It, it hurts them if information comes out that there's a skimmer, but uh, we were also told that they don't even have to report these. They don't have to report if they find skimmers. Mm -hmm. So 
who knows how many cases there have been out there where they just pull it out and don't say anything to anybody. Uh, a couple of investigators were telling us that there is this hesitance to actually report this information and make it public because they think it will blow back on their business and affect sales, which if you're a small business owner, I'm sure anybody can understand. But that also is where I guess we come in, where public agencies come in, where we have to inform people and help them make the best decision. Right. So is this putting people on notice? Maybe, but hopefully it, it prompts change too and prompts people to be a little more proactive on the business side as well as on the consumer side. I think in our reporting we found we went to go check up on some of these crazy incidents, the 13 time Louisville station, yeah. uh, the, the place in Dallas where the alarms had been going off for several days or yeah. the, the Tape, the tape had been, been broken, broken for two weeks. For two and they weeks. They don't say anything. So it seems that even these owners in these like really significant breaches have already made amends yeah. to try to fix things. Well, yeah, the the guy with the that had been hit 13 times in Louisville. Um, I went there last week to tell him, you know, hey, you're going to be part of our coverage, and all oh, brand new, like top of the line gas pumps. They're and, on it. And I'm like, mm, these are not the ones that got skimmed, right? Right. And he, he said, yeah, last year, I guess they just had enough because, I mean, they were, the police were getting called there not just even once a month. It was multiple times. There was one case where they pulled out the skimmer, and then the very next night, the guys had come back and put them in again. Same pumps. They're brazen. So I think they just got sick of having to deal with it. And It takes a lot of vigilance, and sometimes the only thing think that we found that can prevent this is installing the right kind of technology. Yeah. I visited that uh, gas station in Dallas, the one off Forest Lane, and I roll up there because, you know, stories airing in a couple of days and I wanted to let them know they were part of our coverage. Everything was under construction. So I go to the general contractor and I'm like, what's going on? Like, wh where is everybody? And he was like, oh, we broke ground yesterday. We're going to be replacing everything. Yeah. So I hope that that fixes a lot of these issues that had previously plagued these gas stations. Well, yeah, not only that with the new pumps, but people were asking us about the chip technology and why mm. the pumps don't have them. And the way that it was explained to us is, yes, when the chips technology rolled out a few years ago, everybody, all businesses have a certain amount of time uh, to install readers with chip technology and gas stations, uh, the way the Secret Service explained it, there's kind of the final frontier. Mm -hmm. So the way they uh, understand it is that's why it's really ramping up right now. These these guys with the skimmers are hitting them hardcore because as soon as the gas pumps change over, that's going to really cut out a lot of this. But right now, they just it's a swipe. It's not the chip for the most part. This technology takes a long time to go into effect. I know that we've been seeing chip readers for many years at this yeah. point. Uh, but for vendors and merchants to actually catch on, get certified, and make the payments in order to use this technology, it's not as instantaneous. So even if you see a chip reader inside the clerk's uh, office at a gas station, they may ask you to swipe the card anyway because they haven't been certified in that right. yet or they haven't made the payments in order to use the chip technology. Mm -hmm. So again, I think we go back to just use cash. It's the <laughs> safest way to go about it. Uh, but there is also a push by state lawmakers yeah. to address this issue. And I think the timing really was interesting because <laughs> I think we found out a couple of days before this story aired. So I'm glad that we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Two, two different lawmakers supposedly um, are going to file bills this session that deal with it. I know one of them, uh, you know, they're kind of antsy about talking about it right now because all the details haven't been um, put in place. But they were talking about a main database, which is kind of what we were talking about. Would Everybody solve we this asked issue. about, we were like, why isn't there one place where uh, these are reported? It's hard to tell. Yeah. But, I mean, we're trying, and if anybody else has any questions, send them into the email, justice at cbs.com, and we're happy to answer them. For sure.